Hey everybody and welcome to episode 98 of Design Cinema. This is Feng Zhu speaking and today we're going to be talking about cinematic lighting. Uh, the reason why I want to approach this subject today is because of our own students here at the school as well as uh, what I see online. A lot of younger students in particular always want to get into digital painting. Now oftentimes I do see them getting into digital painting very early before they have a good concept of uh, fundamentals and perspective, lighting, materials, and so forth and so forth. And the painting is, uh, in general, doesn't come out that nice. It's, uh, it's muddy, if, if the drawing is not done nice, it's, uh, it's very wobbly because it doesn't have good perspective and so forth. Now, there's nothing wrong with practicing digital painting. You know, as long as you're doing something, you will get better. Okay? However, today all I wanna do is kinda change your mindset for digital painting, especially if you're trying to get into our line of work, which is entertainment design and not uh, producing these paintings as art. But for entertainment design, our process is really about making a product. So instead of thinking about digital painting, today let's try to think about cinematic lighting. Okay, we're gonna treat these sets as physical sets and we're gonna try to put lights in them virtually. Okay, so a lot of students when they approach a painting, they're kind of just dabbling in paint. They're trying to paint it up in a way. And especially with those with no fundamentals, they're kind of experimenting. And uh, again, the results is all over the place. It gets muddy, forms don't read, uh, they try to photo bash, and that doesn't really help that much if you if you have a good, uh, doesn't have a good concept of how to make things read. So today I wanna show you guys another way to approach this and maybe it will help inspire a, uh, a new way to approach uh, digital painting, which is think about light. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take four photographs that I found on the internet. So they, they don't belong to me, they're just photos I found on the internet. Let's open these up. And we're gonna pretend that these are actual sets that are built to shoot a film on, okay? Or it's a triple A game, it doesn't matter, it's the same process, okay? So notice I chose four very flatly lit photos. I did that on purpose, okay? These are generally tourist photos, okay? Um, they're, they're taken in the middle of the day, that's generally if tourists go on their uh, uh, tour, tour guides, right? It's generally between like 8 a.m. to about 3 to 4 p.m., which is for us is one of the uh, most difficult times to light because the sun is straight up above the, uh, the, the uh, sky. So you get very short shadows, you don't have high contrast, it's pretty bad. Uh, most films are shot in the magical hours, right? The early morning or the, when the sun's going down. So tourist photos are actually not very good for, for showing products, but they're perfect if you wanna practice. Now the reason why I'm using photos is because it saves you some time to learn. This is only to practice. These photos don't belong to me and it doesn't belong to you. So use this just to practice, okay? And when you're done with these, throw these things away or keep it private. Don't put these on art station and say these are your digital paintings because these photographs and the subject matters, the perspective, the camera angle, they're not yours. They, they belong to the photographer. But of course you can use this to learn. Like everything, learning is, you can do whatever you want when you're learning as long as you don't try to claim the process or the subject matter as yours. And today I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be using these photographs to just cut out some time because we could draw these ourselves. For example, our students here, they will be producing them, these themselves. They'll be building 3D or they'll draw and line drawing. It takes you know, a week or so to build something like this up. But if you're just learning about lighting, well, of course you can use photographs to kind of cut that time out. So that way you focus purely on the lighting and not focus on getting a nice drawing out to start, which could stop a lot of students from, uh, from proceeding forward because they don't get a nice drawing out and then they try to paint on top of a loose drawing, or maybe they don't even have a drawing, and then the result is horrible because the, there's no perspective and the environment's all wobbly and looks bad, okay? By using a photograph, at least you have a good starting point, okay? Now, what you could do is you could choose whatever you want, okay? You could choose uh, like real estate photos from like the selling a house. The idea here is to get a flat photograph, something that has no atmosphere, that has no light, okay? Because the whole point is that we're gonna try to put that in ourselves. We're gonna treat these again like a real set. So here we have a French town, okay? Here is interior of a church. Here is a interior of a castle. And here's a, the same French town, actually. This is a town that uh, inspired Beauty and the Beast, I believe. So it's pretty cool. It's a French town, pretty old medieval times. Um, but they're all very, very flat. These are not ideal for a film or a video game. And today we'll be using a very, I guess, um, easier approach to make these things read. And this approach, there's nothing wrong with it. 
I'll go step by step on how I did it, and then I'll show you uh, the actual process itself. But that part, I'll, I'll fast forward. Right now, I'm uh, obviously in real time. But this process, once you learn it, you can use this for the rest of your life. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this type of lighting setup. In fact, most films and video games are, are using it today. Uh, if you watch things like Game of Thrones or uh, Skyfall, Blade Runner, uh, all these films, they all rely on this type of lighting, which is, uh, let's, let's use this example, which is called backlighting, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose our subject matter. In this case, let's use this ex as an example. The subject matter here, most likely is this house, right? Let me make the opacity go down a bit. All right, so this is our subject matter, this house right here, okay? To sell this subject, one of the easiest ways to approach it is by simply silhouetting it. To do that, we have to do a couple steps. Number one, okay? We're gonna turn the light off. Okay, turn off light. In this case, we're dealing with the sun. So how do we turn off the sun? Well, we can make this overcast or we can make it a nighttime scene. So since we're practicing, we could do a pretty quick job with that, right? I know there's real-time shadows in here and don't worry about it. We could get rid of that pretty quickly, uh, especially if this is not your, uh, we're not claiming this painting to be your design. We're just using the practice. So it doesn't have to be super clean and so forth. We're gonna turn off the light. Two, we're gonna color grade this guy. Okay. Color grading generally in films, you guys can look this up on Wikipedia, is that kind of making all the colors pretty uniform towards a sink, uh, certain temperature. For example, it goes in the cools, it goes in the warms. It makes controlling value much easier, it makes controlling atmosphere much easier. So uh, most films, not most, pretty much all your films color grade. It kind of just makes everything look a little, little better, okay? And photographers color grade this stuff as well, okay? Number three, we're gonna stage the backlight. And today, this is the, the main learning point for today's episode, is staging this process right here. So what does backlight mean? That means we're gonna put the light source, the key light, directly behind whatever you're trying to sell. We'll put it in a way that it shines light behind your subject, so it silhouettes it out. So if we look at this house over here, if that is our selling point, to make that possible, we wanna put the light right behind it and let it shine light all around it so we can silhouette it. Since this light is behind the building, we cannot physically see it, so it's okay. So we start there, okay? And to make this process easier on yourself, to kind of think of yourself as a cinematographer versus a digital painter, and that, that's the whole point of today's episode, is like, don't think of it as digital painting. Think of it that you showed up to this French town, director tells you, hey, I'm gonna come back in four or five hours when it's eight o'clock, uh, I want you to set up all the lighting, so I'm gonna come back and shoot it. So of course you do something, right? You're not gonna just go, um, I'm just gonna leave it as is, and hopefully the, the, the town itself lights itself. It's not gonna happen. Uh, you're gonna go in with some lights and just play around with it until it looks good. So think of it that way. So here I'm gonna open up, I have a little PSD file prepared here, okay? Is uh, two lights, right? I have a little diffuser and a spotlight. So this is gonna be a caricature of it, obviously for real film, there's a lot more lights. In fact, I could show you, uh, I found a couple of photos here, just to show you a little bit behind the scenes of what they look like. These are all from films, okay? So films, I mean, it'll be really easy if film was just, we just go to a location and shoot it as is, but that's not the point. We're trying to make things cinematic. That means we're trying to show the subject matter as easy as you can for the audience and make it look nice on screen. And that's cinematography, right? So you can hear, here's John Wick. Uh, this is John Wick 3, right? So you can see a huge light outside the set and that's providing a nice silhouette to uh, punch our, uh, our actors out. You can see the blue light coming through the window. And these, I'll leave these here for a second because this is gonna, they all have the same formula. Okay, here's John Wick 3 again. So you can see a strong stage light, really, really blown out. And that's gonna create a nice silhouette. Okay, um, here is a, here's a really old photo of Harry Potter. Okay, nice bounce board, the ambient lights coming down from here. Here's a James Bond. All right, so these are all creating illusions. Okay, this is uh, Roger Deakins. Uh, you can look up a lot of his films. If you wanna study more on this subject matter, uh, look for his films. For example, Blade Runner 2049. Um, uh, Sicario, Skyfall, right? uh, Fargo, Shawshank Redemption. Okay, he shot a lot of films and they have really beautiful cinematography as well as lighting. So I've been watching a lot of his work for uh, forever now and trying to learn from that, okay? So what we're trying to do is we're gonna do the same kind of line of thought is 
Don't think of it as digital painting. Think of it as a set. Okay. So let's throw these little lights in. If you want to create this, what do we do? Okay, let's throw this little light in here. Boom. Okay. We'll put this light, make it shine so it points to the right. Let's put another one and make it point to the left. Doink. Let's make one point to the top. Oops. Boom. Let's do that. Okay. If you don't want to create hard shadows, you could put a diffuser. If you want a hard shadow, you don't have to use a diffuser. Right? This stuff, you don't have to get that technical, but the more you think in this line, the more you're going to start thinking about your sets as a set versus, um, uh, you know, a lot of students go, I want to try to do digital painting and they're just blabbing around with paint. They're focusing on the brush. They're focusing on like doing some texture work, uh, thinking all on paint. And again, if the fundamental is not there. The result is generally pretty muddy. It doesn't really read. Uh, and they're kind of just struggling with the software. So today, this is another way to approach it. Okay, so uh, hopefully this will uh, inspire some of you guys. Okay, let's put another light. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to put a little bit of ambient light to hit the bottom of this corner. I'm also gonna put a little bit of ambient light to hit the bottom of this corner. I'll use a red pen here to mark what I'm trying to do. Okay, the goal here is trying to create a backlight situation. Let me show you what I mean. Let's open up, um, let's go open a GOT here. Here's Game of Thrones. Let's open another one. Here is Blade Runner, the Roger Deacon's uh, cinematographer I was just talking about. <clears throat> or director of photography, okay, DP. So notice they have something in common. Let's open another one here. Uh, what else do I hear? Oh, I have the new, uh, the new Mulan trailer. I took a couple of screen caps. So let's take a look at that in a second, but let's look at Game of Thrones, okay. So here you see we have the windows in the scene and the windows are very much blown out. And notice there's a heavy amount of fog in the set. And the purpose of that is to backlight, okay? To create an area of light, medium, and closest to the camera, dark, L-M-D. Just keep that in mind. Light in the background, medium in the mid-ground, dark in the foreground. So notice these chairs, Jon Snow, they're all pretty much dark because this creates a silhouette effect. And there, this works really, really well to show up your subject matter. And like I said, you can use this lighting technique for the rest of your life. It will work because almost all your big budget films and television use this setup, okay? Uh, and this is also why a lot of uh, films or final scenes are always uh, in the dark, nighttime, because it saves a little bit of money. So that way, if they're doing VFX and big CG dinosaurs like Jurassic Park, it's always some kind of night scene, okay? So here we're looking at Blade Runner. Here is uh, our main actor walking here. Notice backlight, it's light, then it's medium, a little bit medium dark, and then gets really dark, right? A very nice gradation from light to dark. So a little bit of fog here, so the left side of the screen doesn't go super, super dark. And you can actually analyze some of the key lights that's hitting here. But this actor is definitely silhouetted, okay? So that we could pick up this actor walking on the set and we don't get confused. And we're gonna use the same thing for our, for our little house over here, okay? Let's look at Mulan over here. This is pretty interesting. This trailer just came out a few days ago. And uh, you can actually see they use the same formula for every single shot, which is light blown out window, medium, dark, okay? So light, medium, dark, foreground, midground, background. Let's keep going here. Light background, silhouettes are actors, which I should do here, right? So you can see this lady here is silhouetted. This guy here is silhouetted. Okay, Mulan herself is silhouetted. And how did they get silhouetted? Because we put a giant blowout light in the background. Okay, just like that Game of Thrones. And windows are not that bright in real life. You look at that, right? That's a stage light. So this is not a real castle, right? This is a stage. So I'm pretty sure this Mulan is a stage as well. We've got two practical lights on the left and the right. So they just add ambience and they add uh, cinematography balance for composition but they're not using them to light the actor. They're too weak, okay? So these are practicals. Uh, the main stage light is the one behind the window. So this, this shot here, same thing. We have a main stage light behind the window, uh, blowing, uh, blowing the window essentially out, and we have that to silhouette our actors, and this becomes the medium, and notice the dark in the foreground. So there's the angle here, that's the angle here. Next one here, you have once again, blown out light out the window, diffuse the yellow uh, window curtain here. So we have a medium over here and then we have dark in the foreground. Notice how dark the shadows are, right? So same tricks, you can see the, the same formula used over and over again because it works really well. When you try to light 
the opposite, which is like front lighting, side lighting, the shots become more difficult to set up. So un unless you have a very specific reason, especially for doing concept art, unless you have a very specific reason, generally we just stick to kind of this, uh, you know, this true and tested uh, way of doing things because it's fast, it makes things read, and it looks pretty good, okay? So because again, these big budget films are using it. So here's another one here. It's, it, this one's actually quite interesting just to show you guys for every single shot, we change the light to create a cinematography feel. So we don't use the light source as is, we always change it. And when you guys are doing the concept bar, it's the same kind of thing. So here you can actually see Mulan um, practicing with a sword. This is a practical here, so that's not gonna provide the light source. The actual light source is off screen and to the upper left. You guys see the angle of light you can calculate that off the shadow of the shelf and you hit it right about here. So there's a light somewhere over here and it's creating this soft cone this way, okay? Therefore the highlight on Mulan is right about here. So that's their main light. And they're also silhouetting her using this light, okay? Using that darker shelf to silhouette her uh, highlight. You have some ambient light coming from the uh, right side, but pretty dark. Now as they switch to a different camera, same scene, she's practicing, you can just see that the light has been switched to the left. So now her right face, or her left, is dark. This side is light. But if you look at the previous shot, you can actually see that her face is not lit that way. You see this side actually has quite a bit of light. So this is what I mean by cinematography, uh, cinema, cinema lighting, okay? Is that we change it to get the best effect. Uh, going back to some of these, uh, these restaurant, not restaurant, these uh, dinner shots, the interesting thing is you can actually find the lights if you look very carefully. For example, the little teapot right here, if you zoom way in, you can see there is a light right behind the actors. That's a there's a little bounce right there, right? You can see one right at this angle. That light there is creating the ambience on this lady's shoulders. This light here is creating the ambience. You can just see it on her neck actually. It's uh, it's this light right here, and there's more lights here. There's light way back here, right? Here's one the ceiling going up, right? So you got to find it. You can find it in the upper shots here as well. So you can see here there's quite a bit of lights here. There's one the ceiling. Uh, there are two or three to the left of the screen. There's another one to the right. These are all ambients. But the main light creating the, um, the silhouette is the one out the window. That's a giant light out there or a few lights out there. Uh, and they're just blowing out that window to create the silhouette. Let's see if you can find it here. Oh, you can see it here as well. Uh, this little highlight over here. So uh, you can always look for highlights to see where the lights are in a scene. So uh, depends on the budget. Sometimes films are erased those out, but stuff like this, nobody notices it, so they leave it in. Um, but there are cases in which they actually CG those things out to prevent the audience from seeing um, the staging of the sets. Okay, so that's, that's Mulan. So we'll be using the same formula here. Let's go back to, uh, let's leave this Game of Thrones one here because it's uh, pretty much we're gonna use that formula for everything, especially for the interior. Let's put the castle here. So here's a castle interior, really flat lit, doesn't look so good. Uh, if you compare that to Game of Thrones, right? Similar setting, right? Medieval castle, stone. But the Game of Thrones one, let me take my notes out, is cinema, top, is cinema versus the castle one looks like a uh, catalog photo, right? It's not It's not so good for, uh, hold on a second. Let me reopen that GOT one because I put pen marks all over it. Okay, here we go. Okay. What we want to do is achieve the one here on the right, the Game of Thrones. Actually, I just saw another one. Uh, here's the, the Lannister guy here, all right? Notice the same formula, blown out window. Why? To create silhouette, medium, and then very dark in the foreground. Notice the floor here is dark on the left and dark on the right. We'll do this exact same thing, right? So we're trying to turn that castle into these GOT shots here, okay? To do that, we can already see the formula could kick in. Since we have a window here, Oops, let me put that in a different layer. Since we have that window, we'll put light directly through it. We're gonna just gonna blow that light out. Okay, it's gonna be almost glowing white. We also have a door here. So that works pretty well. So what we could do is go put a light right behind here, put a light right behind this wall here to create a little bit of light. Now we don't wanna blow this door out because that makes no sense to have a light blow off through a door. Generally, these windows have glass. You can see these Game of Thrones are using the same formula here. So that way we could make an excuse for this kind of blown out white light. But for a door, we can't do that, but I do want this to this scene to breathe. So I'll put a little light over here, off to the side behind the wall. Okay, so essentially it's right there. This one is right here. Now there's a lot of practical lights in this scene and they're not really gonna help me light, but I'll mark them. There's one here, all these candles up here. Uh, there's one over here. They're not really gonna help me, so I'm gonna turn them off and re, uh, repaint them as candles. 
and they're pretty much used for composition. Again, they're not gonna light the set too much, too weak. Candlelight especially is really, really weak. So uh, you can actually see in this GOT shot, they actually have some candles and they don't do anything. They're just there for decorations and balancing out the composition, right? You get a little hit off this person's sword here, but essentially these candle lights don't do much at all. You cannot depend on, on them to light a set, okay? Oh, let's, we have an armor. Let's see if we can pick up some other lights. It looks like they have a light in the upper area coming in as well. That's why these guys' armor is getting hit. There's a light somewhere over here, I think, in the upper right quadrant uh, to get a little bit of ambience in there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So that's for this scene here. What are we selling? Since we have no actors in here, we're trying to sell the chair, the chair, and the bed. So those those three things get silhouetted. This first one, the little house, gets silhouetted. Let's see what else we got. Okay, so we got this guy over here. Let's throw him over here. We're going to do the same thing. So if we look at this little street scene, the subject matter is going to be this guy right here. All right, this guy right here. To do that, we're going to put lights behind it to silhouette. Now there's a, a kind of a walkway here. We're going to darken this dude here and uh, put light in front. So we could create a constant silhouette. Since this is dark, we're going to try to make this guy a little lighter and then the sky even lighter than that. So it's always going from dark, medium. Oh, oops, sorry, made a mistake there. Always going from light, medium to dark. Just use that formula. And this doesn't matter if it's nighttime or daytime. Same thing Repeat it, light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark, okay? And again, you're practicing. This is uh, something for you to learn. If you're a professional, you don't, again, you don't have to care about anything I'm saying right now because you're a professional. This is just for students. If you're learning uh, digital painting. This is just another way for you to kind of think about how to stage your scene. So you're not kind of experimenting and kind of randomly doing things. You can use a little bit of logic, a little bit of planning, and hopefully that could give you a pretty good result. Okay, I think I have one more here. Where's my, where's my last one here? There's my town, there's the interior. Oh yeah, this church, this one's the easiest one to do because it's it's almost like a GOT shot right here. It's medieval, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. So same thing here. This was the fastest one, uh, all of all of them to, uh, to paint actually, uh, or to light. Let's not use the word paint, to light. Darken everything down, okay? And uh, just blow this window straight up. Okay, I'm gonna blow the light straight in. And then that's gonna create a nice silhouette on these arches, these chairs. They're all gonna silhouette. We're gonna blow out this one just a tiny bit, but not as heavy as the left one because that's our main light source. So we don't want both to be competing. So we have this left one as our light. Then we have our mediums. And then in the foreground, we have our darks, okay? Always this formula. And this is why if you watch, uh, again, going back to Game of Thrones, all the interiors always have some, some kind of light blown out. And, and since they're a TV show, they often put their windows even higher up so that way they don't have to green screen whatever is outside so uh, so they can move the cameras around without worrying to uh, fill the background with CG because they're all sets. They're not really in King's Landing, for example. So uh, these are things you notice as you work in this, uh, in this industry. Okay, so... Uh, that's sort of what this is. So what you could do is to uh, go online or take your own photographs, try to find something that's just really flat. Okay, again, don't start with a beautiful photograph. You don't want something that's really been uh, lit well by the photographer where they, sh where they sh uh, found a scene that's like five o'clock, six o'clock, magic hour, it's beautiful shot. You don't want that. You want these kind of vacation photos, these flatly lit, uh, not super pretty photographs. Uh, find something that has a subject matter uh, you can even find something pretty boring, like like I said, like a real estate uh, photograph, it's just, just a random house in the neighborhood. See if you could light it. Treat it like this is a film set. Like imagine to shoot some suburbia uh, house for some uh, for some TV show. How would you how would you light it? Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is um, let the video jump into uh, fast forward. So I I took these four and applied uh, this uh, this formula over it. So I'll, I'll narrate it, but the video itself is fast forwarded. So uh, let's jump into that. All right. All right. So here we are. Now we are in fast forward mode. Um, so let's start with this French town. The first thing to do is uh, I threw this into a 235 film ratio. So it looks a little bit more cinematic. And therefore, I have to add a little bit to the left and to the right because these shots uh, were not taken at this film at this ratio. So when you put it in, uh, in 235, it looks uh, we're missing the left and the right. So, okay. So here we are. We're going to color grade this thing and turn off all the lights. Notice I turn everything a little bit into the blues and make everything a little bit dark. Okay, so now this photograph obviously has a lot of shadows and so forth, but don't worry about that yet. Okay, now what you're seeing is I'm selecting all my major objects, okay, especially this house in the middle and putting a hot color on it. 
This is uh, basically creating a mask, uh, like a very cheap <laughs> mask, okay, without creating a channel. So this is the way I generally just max uh, uh, stuff out. So that way I can always select these colors and get that mask out without having to create a separate channel for it. It just saves a little bit of time. Um, so you can see here, I'm selecting those masks and making it a little bit darker. We're trying to prepare everything to be silhouetted. Remember, light, medium, dark. Okay, so our main house here, you can see it's going really dark right now. It's not so good looking, but don't worry about it. One thing at a time, turn off all the lights, make your objects silhouetted, and we'll add the lights in uh, one at a time. So here I'm starting to add the atmosphere behind this house. You can see even at this early stage, this uh, house here is really reading, okay? It's popping out from the scene. Of course, we're missing all the little, little uh, subtleties and so forth but always concentrate on your selling point first, your medium object, right? Your medium uh, layer thing, which is generally what you're trying to sell to the audience. So here I'm starting to introduce that light that we talked about earlier, one pointing left, one pointing right, and one pointing up. So that's gonna create this halo effect around this house and uh, it makes it pop right away. Here I'm adding the practical lights in to, uh, to just to balance the composition. So practical light is not really gonna light the scene for us. It's just gonna create a nice uh, balance for us. So here I'm gonna silhouette all the uh, all the major shapes out. And now some of the staircases, getting some bounce light from the sky above, okay? And notice I don't work super zoomed in. I'm always uh, working a little bit zoomed out so that we can see the bigger picture uh, always and don't get focused on details yet, especially when you're practicing. This thing is not about painting a beautiful, tight painting because you cannot use this in your portfolio anyways. This is just practice. What you're trying to practice is to think in terms of light, and especially stage lighting, not real lighting, okay? Not like a moonlit light or a sun light. This is all fake. Every single light here is done by a giant stage. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a film light. So when you start thinking that way, you start to approach these scenes in a complete different manner. And that's how I kind of do a lot of my uh, paintings these days, is that I always treat them like a physical set, so each time I start these, there isn't a question of, okay, how should I do this? You know, what, what should I do first? It's just, okay, which light goes to the left? What, where do I place the second light? Where do I place the third light? It becomes a more pipeline type of work. And uh, like I said, this works for about 95, 96% of everything you'll be doing. And this will last you an entire lifetime. This essentially it's a formula, okay? And Hollywood uses this, major video games uses this. So there's nothing wrong with it. And if you're just trying to learn how to do digital painting, I definitely give it a try. Yeah, it makes things a little bit easier to handle, especially if you use something like a photograph to start. So you can see here, it's starting to uh, read quite well. So this in real time took about, uh, right now this got fast forward to about five minutes. So times four is about 20, 20 to 30 minutes uh, to do this because I had a photograph. Now this, I didn't have a photo and I have to draw it and obviously this will take a much longer time. But uh, yeah, use a photo, speed things up, uh, test with it, play with it. And once you're done, just don't, don't put this on your art station. You know, don't claim this as a painting because this is not, this is using somebody's photograph as a, as a base. Uh, but definitely use it to, uh, to try things out and you can experiment even with the same photograph, you could try different kind of lighting scenarios and just see if you could paint the light in and not treat it like a digital painting because that word sometimes hurts a lot of students. They're concentrating so much on painting that they totally forget about, uh, for example, fundamental, it completely goes out the window. Uh, they don't, you know, there's no perspective, there's nothing. Uh, other things like value completely go out the window. There is no dark, medium light. It's just all just color everything because they're trying to paint, uh, focusing on brush and focusing on textures and all these things that are really uh, doesn't are not important unless you're painting reeds, right? So here, you're just treat, treating the entire thing like a, like a little diorama, okay, a little set, and just make sure that everything reads within that set and don't think about the painting part at all. Just think light, dark, light, dark, that's it. Dark things on light, light things on dark, dark things on light, just go back and forth, back and forth uh, using this formula. And you can see everything in here is doing that. So the house in the middle is the darkest, so it sits in front of a lighter background. And these people walking, they're darker and they walk in front of a lighter background. So it's constant play of this. Um, the left here is I'm introducing that little side light so the street here doesn't go entirely dark. And we could also use that to bounce a couple of the bricks and stone on the floor here. And I'll introduce the same light source onto the right side as well so the scene doesn't get, doesn't get too dark. Okay. So the practical lights here, these yellow lights right, and also the windows, they're there just to balance the composition. It makes the scene come alive as well. You can see before and after. Uh, the uh, before is very, very flat and the after reads. And this is generally how, how uh, these film stuff uh, looks. 
Now for video games, it gets a little trickier, especially if this is a real time uh, game, like this is a town or something. It's very hard to do this because in film, everything is staged, everything is fake. So behind this uh, house, if this was a film, will be a bunch of lights pointing in every single direction, some even pointing at the floor, right? And they're physically there with a bunch of power cables and so forth. So you could create this effect. Now in the video game, this becomes much harder to do because if you walk to that street, you cannot have a glowing street. So game still has this issue of it, it has to be done real, but then you don't get the cinematography vibe as a result of it, unless you're really lucky. So if you're walking towards like a sunset and the lighting is just perfect, you're gonna get these beautiful shots. But if you want the, the scene to be controlled, it gets really tricky if it's real time because you cannot achieve, for example, this shot. You cannot do it because the streets behind this house will be too light, too bright if you walk there. It will make no sense, right? So the cinematography lighting makes no sense in reality. These lights come out of nowhere. So if you watch like, uh, you know, like uh, again, let's go to Game of Thrones, they'll be in a forest and there'll be a glowing light coming from the forest for no reason. Like behind the trees, there's be glowing lights. Like someone put a spotlight on the middle of the floor and it's making out a tree silhouette. It makes absolutely no sense, but it looks good. And that's the thing you're worrying about. And most audience will never care about it. So I was just watching the other the HBO show with a band of brothers. Um, there's the second episode they, when they um, parachute into the forest. And same thing, the forest is completely brightly lit with stage lights. So that way we could see the actors because in real life, everything would just be purely dark, right? So again, this is very um, achievable in films, much more hard, much hard to do in video games, in real time, kind of open worlds. You just can't get this effect going. Um, so I don't know how you could get around it. It's actually pretty hard because you're just creating reality and reality sometimes doesn't look that good. So unless you're really, really lucky. So, uh, so this is still the formula I'm using here uh, applies mostly for films where at least when you're doing a still to design a, a triple video game, you can use this to kind of show off your subject matter, but you cannot achieve this effect in real time. It's pretty hard to do. So, um, all right, take a drink here. So this one's almost done. You can see the whole point here is just dark things on light. That's it. Things closer to the camera is dark. Things in the medium is medium and things in the background is light. So even though this is nighttime, we follow the daytime type of scenario because in, re in reality, nighttime is actually the opposite. Which generally something in front of you is brighter and as things go further from you, it gets darker because that's how light works at nighttime. You can't see things that are further from you. But in cinematography, in, in films, we always treat nighttime as if it's day. So the background is still brighter than the foreground. So uh, in this case, like the sky here is not really a, a night sky. It's kind of like a, like a, like um, maybe the sun just set like 10 minutes ago kind of sky. But you'll notice this in pretty much all your films. And nighttime is pretty much daytime. Uh, in fact, they shoot most nighttime during daytime and they kind of just color grade it to blue. Uh, so that way it's, uh, it looks like nighttime, but actually it's not. So, um, so I'm doing the same thing here. So these paintings, during practice, you can make it look pretty cool. But again, I mentioned this, don't put this in your portfolio. Don't claim this is yours because this photograph is taken by somebody else. So unless you get their permission, you can ask them, you know, say, like, hey, I took your photo and did a, um, did a painting off of it. Can I use it in my portfolio? If they say, if they say okay, then fine. But in most cases, you know, uh, try to do your own design. So for our students here at the school, they will actually build these towns, for example, on their own. They will build in SketchUp, they will draw it. So the entire creative process is theirs. And when they do a painting on top, there, there are no issues. Okay, so here I'm gonna start the, uh, the second town here. So another flat shot, but nice perspective. So uh, pretty cool. So I'm doing the same thing, extending the canvas left and right because we put it in a film ratio. And if you want the subject to uh, fit, you're gonna generally lose the left and to the right. So kind of just, it doesn't have to look so good. These are just practice, right? So we don't, we don't have to make the perspective perfect. And also we're gonna make the left and right side of the screen darker anyway, so you're not gonna see too much detail, okay? So first film ratio, now we're gonna color grade and now silhouette all your major forms. So here I'm creating the, uh, sometimes they, they're called clown maps, basically these rainbow color uh, forms and they just make selecting them easier. So uh, same, same thing as a green screen in a way, it's easy to select in Photoshop. So I just select all my major forms and that way it creates a uh, easy to access mask. Uh, you could do this a lot more complicated by actually using the, uh, the channels layer to create this physical mask, like these black and white. But I find using the clown map, these kind of color things just as good and it's much easier and probably lighter on memory as well. So this foreground uh, walkway, I also kind of mask that out as well. Okay. So uh, now making the sky dark and make every subject darker. Same formula, this and the town is the same, except I'm not gonna make this one at nighttime. I'll make this into a, kind of like an evening shot, magic hour. We're gonna have a ray of warm coming in from the right, but the formula is exactly the same, which is light, medium, 
dark and you hear me repeat that over and over so once you get more confident you can start playing with uh, playing around with other lighting scenarios but really you could you could use this for a long time this formula it'll, it'll work for almost anything out there uh, because it's so easy to make subjects read and our job at the end of the day is not to become a cinematographer right that's that's the cinematographer's job our job here is to sell these subject matter in the uh, in the fastest time possible and the and the best kind of uh lighting as possible so this kind of backlight silhouette works for almost anything and it works for characters as well so i'm using environments but you can essentially place uh, whatever you want in the medium and light it you know, using a silhouette so it's just it's just very very fast and when you're learning you want to have some good results you boost morale and you want, also want to make it easier and by using these flat photographs at least you don't have to worry about uh, doing perspective and doing nice drawing just concentrate purely on lighting so I used to do this a long time ago with the photographs I, I take on my own, um, so just random neighborhood houses and uh, even your own room and just see if, like, well, if you have to shoot a film here, how would you light it? Because the original generally is very, very flat. So uh, I used to do a demo here at the school where you go to these realtor uh, websites, which they take these kind of HDR shots. They're super flat. They, they have zero lighting because their goal is to show off the house they're trying to sell. So just go to these random realty um, websites and download a bunch of photographs of these flat homes. And then just think, okay, what if this home is for, say, Stranger Things? You know, you can't light it this way. It's, it's pretty ugly for a TV show or even for a film. So how would you light it for a TV show? And uh, just treat it exactly the same. Don't think of it as a digital painting. Think of it as a set. Okay. So here I am, I silhouetted the house. You can see the same formula as the one we just did previously. Uh, backlight, we throw a light behind this uh, house here, blow a bunch of fog out around it so it gets silhouetted, and then, um, and that's it. All right. So I add some grass because I'm gonna throw a light coming in from the left here. So a little bit of warm light, so the sun's just going down. We're hitting that last bit of sunlight. So also play with the contrast of colors uh, between uh, blue and warm. But overall, this entire image is uh, toned towards the cools. So it's going blue. And most of your films uh, in color key or color grade this way as well, in which they go into the, uh, into the blues. So I'm using a little bit of dodge brush. So that brush, got to be a little careful. It's very easy to blow things out into the pure white, which happened, uh, you saw earlier, between the alleyway here in the middle. So the wall there actually went to pure white. So we want to avoid that kind of uh, white bleed. So I painted it back out to, uh, to not get a blown out light. Here I'm kind of painting out some of the shadows that was created by the original photograph because the original photo was something like a noon photo in which the uh, shadow is just going straight down. So I just painted some of those out to, uh, to, to make the scene look a little bit more believable um, because all those shadows are competing with the uh, lighting scenario here. So, but it doesn't matter. These things don't go into your portfolio. They're not meant to be perfect. They're not meant to be anything. They're meant to be practicing. Uh, so yeah, I did this quite a bit myself as well uh, back in the days. It just eases the, uh, the pressure, eases the stress because you have a pretty good ideal uh, uh, plate to work off of. And I learned this generally the hard way as well. I did this just on the job because you work for some uh, certain projects and they'll give you a flat shot for you to light. Uh, back in the days, I didn't even know how to do a lot of this kind of stuff and kind of just taught myself to do it uh, because you have to do it, right? If someone tells you, hey, here's a, here's a shot of, a, of an in-game thing or something, can you help us light it to look better? Well, you do the same tricks here. You're like, okay, let me silhouette it. Let me add the highlights. Let me add the uh, foreground, mid-ground, background and make it read. So uh, essentially, I'm doing the same thing here. This shot took a little bit longer to fix because the original shot was super low res. It was like a tiny little photograph. Uh, and once I put the lighting in, all the detail got lost. So here I'm just adding in a little bit of the architecture, get some of the glass to look like glass, all right? So they reflect a little bit of light and get some of these wood, wood beams in there. Okay. All right, so, uh, and when I'm doing these as tests, essentially these are just practice. I don't do layer management. You can see I have a bunch of layers. I just keep adding new ones when I need it. So when I'm doing a, uh, generally a real project. My layers are a lot more managed. I don't use that many actually. And if I do, I manage them pretty well. So they're generally named or I put them in the right order and so forth. That way, if you give this to a client, uh, the layers is, is, uh, is readable. So right now, because this is all for practice, it doesn't really matter. So my layers is just all over the place. I don't name them, I don't color key them, I mean color code them. I just press new, press new, press new, and it doesn't matter if I have five or 10 or 20 layers. The goal here is to not get bogged down by those kind of things and just concentrate on, on learning, okay? So this piece is uh, almost coming to an end here.
and then we'll move on to the uh, I think the last the, the third one is the interior the castle interior and that one's pretty easy to do because you have so many examples from Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings uh, and they all use the same formula blow out the window get the actors to silhouette against it uh, put some uh, little practical lights like candles and things on the walls and, and that's it okay so but it's, I mean it sounds easy but you gotta try it for yourself because it's not you gotta do this quite a bit to get a handle on it but once you start to pick up this formula you'll see it everywhere when you, the next time you go to a film you'll be like oh man there, there it is and uh, uh, especially TV shows because TV shows don't have a high budget so they like this way because it saves money and you'll see it everywhere from your you know your your uh, your Game of Thrones to Westworld to uh, what's on TV right now like uh, 12 Monkeys you know whatever it's the same kind of lighting everywhere okay so lit there you saw a little bit before and after for uh, the, the flat shot previously and then the relit shot after okay so if you're practicing this I just want to remind everyone again don't put this in your portfolio because the original a person who shot the photograph might give you some trouble if you do that because you, you don't have the rights to these photographs uh, they shot it so um, just use the practice and don't even save them don't put them on the internet so I'm making this claim because I'm just doing this purely for education uh, these these are not gonna go into portfolios or anything like that this is just for design cinema only for learning all right so here I'm gonna do the interior of the castle we start out with this super super flatly lit photograph you know it has like no dimension whatsoever uh, it doesn't read well at all, but uh, that's that's the whole point. We're gonna try to make it read. So uh, here's a very Game of Thrones kind of uh, set here. Now I'm gonna turn off all its practical lights because they're they're also lit by light bulb. So we're gonna make this more of a medieval thing. We gotta get rid of the light bulbs. So I turn them all off, and now I'm silhouetting the subject matter again. In this case we have the chair and the uh, the bed. So we'll use that as our main selling point and do our little clown map on it. So color them in a funky uh, bright color so that we can select it very easily later on. You can actually see on the upper uh, left corner there, these paintings are shrunken, but you can see them very easily in terms of the subject matter, and that's the goal. Uh, so for our audience member who's watching this kind of stuff, they also see the same thing. They don't have to kind of second guess what they're looking at. They'll see instantly what the subject matter is, and that's the goal here. All right, so here I'm gonna darken the edges, same formula. Every one of these images is using the same formula. And the goal here is to keep doing these, you know, practice one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, do 10, 20, 100. And the more you do it, the more you start to pick up this technique. And uh, once you have your fundamentals down and start drawing nice things, then you can apply this uh, painting or lighting technique to whatever you're doing. Okay. So here I'm kind of silhouetting the window as well as the door. You're going to blow them out with super bright light. And here it comes. Okay. So there's a stage light outside that window and just turn it full blast. And it makes no sense because if you think about it in reality, it's like, what, where is that light coming from? Especially in a medieval time, you know, what is, what is that from? From the moon? Okay, but the audience don't care. These are just things that has been used in films forever. And this is, again, one of the hard things to do in video games because uh, we can't do it. Otherwise, yeah, unless they, I mean, I guess they can, but it gets pretty tricky with a lot of scripting. So maybe once you go inside, they start scripting the, uh, the window to do this kind of lighting. And once you go outside, they turn the light off. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's pretty hard to do in real-time games so and also like for example this bed right now reads because we have a fog behind the bed so if this is a real-time game you cannot keep the fog floating there behind the bed that'd be very weird all right here I'm adding the practical candle lights okay here on the wall so changing from light bulb into a candle and candle lights really really weak they're not they're not do much at all but we do want to play them up a bit so we could balance the composition so I threw a hallway light in there, so that way the, the uh, doorway has a little bit of life to it, so it's not a closed door. And that's something you'll see uh, in films as well, in which the background always generally has a breathing room to it, like an open door or open window. So the set doesn't feel so, so much like a set. Okay. Right, I added uh, all these little sconces in there, put the light. So right now I'm using Dodge, which blows out the color like crazy, so we're going to desaturate those down so they're not so hot orange. So here you can see the room is really reading. It's a very different uh, feel than the uh, original kind of uh, the hotel photo. Okay, so now just color grading the whole thing down and getting those chairs and bed to really, really read. Okay, now that white light's gonna come in and just hit the back of this chair, creating some really nice rim lights, and that's gonna pop those forms out very easily for the audience to see. So if you're doing this uh, as a piece of concept art, you can see how easy it is for the art directors to see 
what this room is all about. And if you work on a film, this is generally what a director want to do anyways. So oftentimes on films, if your lighting is pretty good, they'll just follow the same lighting that you have in your shots. And they're going to like you for it because you're saving them some time by understanding the same line of work. You're speaking the same language as the cinematographer or the uh, DP, the director of photography. Uh, and they're going to like working with you because they know that, oh, you understand what they're trying to do. All right. All right, so you can see the doorway there got lit up. Hear that bright light. Look how bright that light is, like completely blown out. And uh, yeah, it's, go watch Game of Thrones. Go watch their, their sets. Their lights do the exact same kind of things. Uh, it's like outside the windows is this bright halo, nuclear uh, bomb kind of bright light. But nobody cares about that. Everybody cares about what's happening in the story, what's happening with the characters, and what's happening with the scene. So they're not going to pay attention to these lights. That makes no sense. Uh, even if you go back to like movies like Alien, uh, uh, where Ripley or aliens when Ripley is inside the uh, queen's chamber uh, if you actually watch that scene carefully there's a light right behind the queen so which makes no sense like she's in this uh, dark room and there's a light right where basically where her uh, where egg sac is you know it's just shining upwards super bright and the shot cuts back to Ripley looking up at the queen and she literally has a light under her feet underneath there's some metal metal uh, floors so it's like the, who installs lights in uh, underneath a floor shining upwards right the whole point is to make Ripley uh, read. That's it. So uh, you guys could go back to uh, to that film and check it out. It's got a lot of these lights, but nobody notices these things. They're they're cool looking, All right? So this room is pretty much there. I'm still balancing things out a little bit. Very uh, medieval set here. Right. Make that floor a little bit reflective. Get some of these practical lights in there. So this kind of lighting in, in cinematography, they generally call this like a three-point light. But uh, in this case, it's actually more of a two-point light because I'm combining my, my, my uh, fill and my backlight to be the same light to create a silhouette. So, and then uh, a little bit more atmosphere. This room got a little bit hazy, but I always tell students, it's better to separate your form out with more fog than to have your scene look flat because you can always control the uh, fog later on. Uh, than to have a room that looks flat or have a scene that looks flat. Right now, the uh, fog is a little bit strong coming out that window. But uh, you'll also notice at the end of this, I'll show you guys a few more shots from, for example, from the GOT stuff. And you can see that it's very, very similar in terms of the finish level, in terms of lighting, okay? We're just essentially using the same formula. Okay, so here I'm just adding a few more rim lights, get that chandelier to uh, silhouette a little bit better against it. And this whole time, I'm never thinking about the word painting. That word didn't even come in. I'm just thinking light, light, light. If light is here, will this go dark? If light is over here, how bright is it? Just purely thinking that context of is this thing reading? Is it darker than the background? And whatever's in front of it, is it darker than it? Just this constant balance of left, right, left, I mean, uh, dark on light. For example, the chair in the foreground, the longer sofa, right now, if you if you uh, blur your eye, you'll see that it is kind of the same value as the uh, uh, door there. So later, I add a little bit more highlight, kind of kind of make it pop out because we want these things to read. Right. So even the uh, the handles on these two little side chairs, there's armoires. Right now, the uh, the foreground chair, you can see that the uh, arm the, the uh, arm part is blending with the back part. So uh, pretty soon, I'll pull that out as well using a little bit of fog. To go here just to make everything read. All right. So you can see before and after, very very different. Add some practical uh, candles in the background there just to pick up that uh, candlestick, and that's going to give us a free perspective as well. Oh, here we are. Here's the fog I talked about earlier to pop that um, little handle out, give a little bit of a rim light from the window. And that actually happen on set. That kind of bright light will create quite a bit of uh, rim lighting on objects. Um, so that kind of little uh, silhouette highlight will show up and it's really nice looking if you can capture it that way. Okay. Here that wood floor will get a little bit bounce as well. And uh, yeah, that, that's it for this one. Good enough. Okay, practice before and after all right so the last one is the church that one went really really quick because uh it was super easy to do because the, the set is already pretty much done all you gotta do is just turn off the lights and blow out the light from the uh from the uh, window you can see here so here comes a church let me open it up so this set if this is a film set and that's why you know a lot of films they look for good sets to shoot on because it makes it easier to light so this set is really easy to set up so all you gotta do is blow the light off from the left uh window get everything dark, turn off all the lights, and then magic, you know, color grade a little bit, and it's gonna look like uh, some medieval set very, very easily. So this will be not difficult, this will not be a difficult light to, uh, set to light up. Okay, so thing, same thing, we're gonna highlight our subject. We really don't have a subject here, so I'm using the pillars as our subject, just to break them out. So I'll do a little uh, uh, masking here. 
as well as the uh, pillar on the right here. I'm gonna mask that guy out as well. And that's it, that's the only two I really mask out, maybe this window, okay. So now we're gonna start adding our formula. Darken the left and right, okay, first thing. Darken our subject, darken everything else after that, and blow out the light from one of your windows. Okay. So you can see darken everything, da -da 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 -da, right. I recommend you guys go watch some uh, Roger Deakins uh, movies. Go watch Skyfall. Uh, what's another one that's good? Yeah, Blade Runner 2049 is quite good. Sicario is very, very good for this kind of stuff. Uh, no Country for Old Men is another good one. So these movies have very good uh, lighting in them. So you can watch it just with uh, silent. You don't even have to have the dialogue on. Just to watch the scenes, especially these establishing shots or these interiors or exteriors, anything with a big environment. And just watch how he sets up the lighting and you'll see this formula starting to get used. Um, okay, here comes the blowout light from the uh, window. Look how bright that is, right? That's a giant stage light outside, uh, just hitting, blasting the room. But because we have this glass, you're not gonna see the stage light and it's perfect. And we'll also put a little bit of light in the, uh, in the window directly in front of us, but not as bright as our key main light. Okay, it's a lot of atmosphere. So in this case, if an actor was to walk into the set here, right in front, the actor will instantly pop and we'll make sure the actor is wearing something dark, like a dark cloak or something. They're definitely not wearing like a white shirt. So that way we could pop the actor uh, against the uh, uh, light as well. And these are little things you'll start to notice the more films you watch, that these uh, balance of dark and light, it goes even further into actors' clothing. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll wear a white shirt if the background is dark and they'll switch to a dark shirt if the background is light. So, uh, so it's pretty cool. So this one in real time, I think this one only took, I think less than uh, 10 minutes to put together in real time because it's super easy. So that's why these kind of sets, you know, directors love shooting these kind of locations, things that has a lot of forms, a lot of shapes, a lot of kind of uh, objects to, to extract because they're, they're a little bit easier to light. So a harder room to light, for example, a big open room with nothing in it is some of the hardest thing to light because you don't have foreground, midground, background. So uh, they get very, very tricky. Like maybe the opening for uh, Alien Covenant, it was pretty tricky. The room in which they are, they're playing the piano in that white room, those things take very subtle lighting to get right. So they're, they're pretty hard. And uh, a lot of experienced directors like to play those kind of things. You know, they're doing things that are difficult. Um, but in most cases like this, is like a very typical medieval set. Uh, not, doesn't take long to set this up for lighting. My general rule is if it's easier in Photoshop to do, it's probably easier in real life as well. If it's harder in Photoshop to do for you, even as a concept art, it's hard. It's probably pretty hard for whoever's gonna do this set as, doesn't matter if it's a video game or VFX shot, it's hard for them as well. So uh, this rule generally applies. And uh, so here I'm adding some candles, just some practical. Again, candles don't go get off, uh, don't give you real lighting. They're just used for composition. They're too weak, so in terms of a light source. Okay. But they will reflect some stuff here and there. If the floor is shiny enough, they'll definitely pick that up, but they're not gonna create like an orange halo in this room. They're just much too weak. All right, and that's that's about it. So we're coming towards the end of this and um, let's go back to real time. All right, here we are back in real time. So I've opened up on the left side, the original photographs without lighting. And then on the right is what we've done today in the tutorial in which we relit these photographs. And you can see the uh, ones on the right read a lot better and they're more suitable for, for things like films and video games, whereas the ones on the uh, left there, pretty flat, right? And we did that on purpose. We chose flat photographs to relight. So now if I open up, for example, um, remember that Game of Thrones shot we had earlier? You can see that these kind of things, let me close this side because it's really, really bright. Okay, let me open up this. You can see this one and the uh, and our church one is really, really similar in terms of uh, the, the color palette and even the candles and so forth uh, because we're using the exact same formula. You can see these two are pretty similar. And if I open up another one, like maybe this one here, this also from GOT, pretty dark. Let me lighten up a bit. Same formula, notice our blown out windows. All right, this one's kind of similar to my castle one. I can actually try to make these even more close in terms of matching them. Let me uh, select this one. All right, so I go, for example, if I want to match that, let's get the darkness to be about the same. I can even get the color to be something, something similar. Because once you have a values, it's very easy to adjust colors, uh, at least this kind of color, because your value is always going to work. The color adjusting is not going to affect your value. For example, I can make the top town one into a complete different, um, color, but the value stays. So watch. 
for example, we can make it like completely warm like this. But it still reads because you're not affecting the value with this color balance. So you can make it like a red or green or whatever you want. And it still works. And that's the beauty of working in value of this kind of dark medium light because it always works. And that's why films uh, do it this way. So you can color grade it to whatever you want later on because your values always work. Uh, same thing with this interior that we just tweaked. That's this one here. Uh, you can make this one, for example, warm, cool. Right? It doesn't matter. We can make it into the greens. Right? And this is something they do in post-production uh, on films and uh, television. So they'll film it. They'll try to get the set to look as good as possible in terms of this value push. And then that way, in, once they take into post-production, they can, can mess with the colors to get into like the cools, the warms, and so forth. Right. So the more you do on set, the easier it is to do later on. But uh, of course, you could do this in post-production as well. Essentially, it's doing the same thing as what we're doing in Photoshop. But uh, similar software, but it's done on, uh, on film. Okay, so hopefully today uh, you guys picked up a, a new technique that you could try out. So uh, go ahead and uh, give it a try. Uh, use uh, some flat photographs and treat it as lighting and see how it goes. So uh, I'll do one more of these, uh, something similar along these lines for students in episode 99. And then we have, uh, I'm kind of working on something. Hopefully that's kind of cool for episode 100 and that was, uh, that'll be coming soon. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. And this is Fane Zeus signing out. I'll see you guys in episode 99. Bye-bye.